effect here to play first because this is the time of year where the peeper frogs come out of their hibernation. They've been waiting very horny all winter to come out and make their loud cry of mating ritual. So I've written a song about it, of course, and I have a sound effect because I did some field work in the Eberwhite Woods a couple days ago. Let me play this through this uh, mic here. It's quite loud. This is what the peepers sound like when they wake up. Can you guys hear that? Clear but loud. And that might only be like four or five frogs, but it sounds like a whole bunch of birds. So in honor of the peepers, I've written a song that um, I've called the Peeper's Cry of Love, but it could have been written like the George Winston album, Winter Into Spring, because it goes through two seasons. Winter, when the Peeper Pond, as it's called, is frozen over. And I actually ski on it in the wintertime with my cross-country skis. So it starts in the winter when everything seems like it's dead, but it's not. The Peepers are hibernating because these little frogs, which are less than an inch long, they actually hibernate and they stay in like tree bark and underneath logs and they have a substance similar to antifreeze in their blood that keeps them from freezing up into little stones and then when we progress through the winter into spring uh, the peepers come out and they make their their loud sound so this is called the peepers cry of love Winter, the pond is frozen hard, it's silent under the snow. The only sound I hear are my skis as I glide over what is below. But the peepers are there, deep in their lair, dreaming in their sleep of spring. They're saving their call for beyond the snowfall and the warmth that will come when they sing. What do they sing? It's the peeper's cry of love. The peeper's cry of love. It's the peeper's cry of love. And it's the peeper's cry of love. The peeper's cry of love. It's the peeper's cry of love. And when the ice is all gone, like a faded song and the pond by its water reclaim. The air is warmed as we tilt toward the sun and the following season is named. And as longer days fade into comfortable nights, all the peepers prepare their new tune. You'll be stunned by all the cacophony which might be with you almost to June. And what exactly is that cacophony? The peeper's cry of love is the peeper's cry of love is the peeper's cry of love and it's the peeper's cry of love it's the peeper's cry of love the peeper's cry of love and Now trillium flowers in the warmer hours, serenaded by the morning dove. The Solomon seal and the wild mountain roo await the peeper's choir of love. You see the sound is intense, piercing immense, your decibel meter will show. Because each egg needs its seed, a future tadpole indeed as into a frog it will grow. Serenaded by the peeper's cry of love, the peeper's cry of love is the peeper's cry of love, and it's the peeper's cry of love, the peeper's cry of love is the peeper's cry of love, and if you find yourself awake, then to the woods 
you must take to access this mighty sound. There's love in the air, no longer despair, as you walk through this most hallowed ground. And hear the peepers cry of love, the peepers cry of love, it's the peepers cry of love and it's the peepers cry of love, the peepers cry of love, is the peepers cry of love and Peepers cry of love. I keep it um outdoorsy. So this is a song that I did once before. I think I polished it up a little bit since then. And it's about the Eber White Woods. So uh, Eber White was a pioneer in Ann Arbor, and he left this huge, relatively speaking, tract of undeveloped woods where the peeper pond is. And I walk through it every day. I'm very fortunate that way. So that's who Eber White is. And the Nan, the song is called Eber and Nan. Nan is Nan Shepherd, who is the Scottish woman from about 100 years more recently who wrote the incredible book, The Living Mountain, which this record album over here is Jenny Sturgeon's record called The Living Mountain, which turned me on to this book. So this is Eber and Nan. He was born as the century drew to its end. John Adams was president, the nation's best friend. He moved to Ann Arbor, a family to tend. The woods still bear his name, and these woods I defend. Eber White, with your vision so bright, you look to the future and you left a birthright. Eber White, you bring me daily delight. Your woods hold me close in the day and the night. Now a realtor makes his appearance in this next verse. Don't take it personally. Property values, they rise and they fall, enchanting us all to the realtor's call. Each plot needs a home and each home needs a wall. But without wild woods, what's the point of it all? Eber White, with your vision so bright, you look to the future and you gave a birthright. Eber White, you bring me daily delight, your woods hold me close in the day and the night. Meanwhile, a hundred years later, across the Atlantic, in Scotland, she was born as her century drew to a close. Her king was George V, the historian knows. From the burns of the highlands, her passion it flows. She captured the wilderness in effortless prose. And Shepherd our Joe, your love story we know. You planted a seed and a mountain did grow. Nan Shepherd, our Joe, how your passion did glow. You swam in the locks and you danced in the snow. She was the grampy and champy and fearless and wise. Learned to savor each journey, all the lows and the highs. Oh, from the break of the dawn to the misty moon's rise, she shared her living mountain, its air and its skies. And Shepherd our Joe, your love story we know. You planted a seed and a mountain did grow. And Shepherd our Joe, how your passion did glow. You swam in the locks and you danced in the snow. Though Eber and Nan walked through life in different eras of history, well, they both feed our hearts and our souls as they share out their mystery. Eber and Nan, friend to woman and man, and to rocks, birds, and water, all of nature's lifespan, hiking gentle glens or alluvial fan. 
Their gifts are for the taking, the Creator's wild plan. Their gifts are for the taking, the Creator's wild plan. Their gifts are for the taking. Oh, the Creator's, the Creator's wild plan. Eber and Nan. A song that I stole the melody from one of my other songs. In This is the last song on this record that I put out. My international album, by that I mean it was prepared for International Concept Album Month, uh, which is this challenge that Jim and I and maybe some other people participated in. And my, my record is called Too Many Records. It's about having your whole life dedicated to accumulating obsolete music. And, and this last song is called No More Space because uh, I don't have any more space for this stuff anymore. So let's give it a shot. Well, I've no more space to store them. I've no more space to store them. My piles of music are obscene and I've no more space to store them. It's a problem. My vinyl's top 3,000 now. My tape's nearly as many. My reel-to-reels are out of hand. Bare shelves I haven't any. And I've no more space to store them. I've no more space to store them. My piles of music are obscene and I've no more space to store them. But this does not stop me from the sin of buying more each weekend. I seem to have no discipline. It's impossible to defend. Cause I've no more space to store them. I've no more space to store them. My piles of music are obscene and I've no more space to store them. If I don't find another way to store my growing stash, then very soon will come the day their numbers I must slash. Oh, a sad day. My every room now serves to be a place for my recordings. Now even when I go to pee, I need to dodge my hoardings. Cause I've no more place to store them. I've no more space to store them. My piles of music are obscene and I've no more space to store them. Yeah, I've no more space to store them. I've no more space to store them. My piles of music are obscene and I've no more space to store them. No more space. Thank you. Those are my three. All right. Hey, I said it. One, two, three, four. <laughs>
Thank you, thank you. This next one also, also is, well, I just only do mine, so I'll quit introducing them as mine. This is called Sundays. I wrote that this uh, about a year ago. very much. And this last one I co-wrote with Robert Frost. That's the poem Stopping by the Woods on a Snowy Evening and I put it to music. My favorite poem.